Little Invitational IMD2 with me is Kaldi, and looks like we have a, a change up for the Chinese casters there. Magic Quinn in the middle, leading it off for them for the Chinese stream. And uh, next for you guys, we have Eloise versus Life Coach. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this matchup for a while. Uh, hopefully, not too long, especially since we've had all, all three zeros thus far in our three matches. And uh, obviously, Jay Shaw taking out the 2014 World Champion Firebat 3 0 in that last match. Very surprising. Pretty cool up upset to see and uh, obviously Tom and Clento obviously advancing uh, in the earlier matches. Now we have Eloise Eli Eli on the screen and we see her decks and it's going to be a secret paladin followed by an aggressive mech shaman. Uh, like, well maybe not so many mechs there, uh, just a couple. I guess yeah, it's, it's kind of the non-mech version uh, but, but uh, there's a few of them in there. This is the version that uh, basically has no bad top deck, where the other one has no bad starts. Uh, right. And then we have the Acro Hunters, the third deck. So a very aggressive lineup here right off the bat. Uh, definitely all three decks synergizing, but that may be bad in Conquest, potentially, if uh, you face something like what Tyce has been bringing or what uh, Jaycee has been bringing. But at least she has the... Uh, I guess the uh, Shaman out of the way early on, but then we have live coach from Gamers 2, the poker player has been dominating, and he has an anti acro lineup. Ooh. Oof. Right, Control yeah. Control Warrior, uh, Dragon Warrior, uh, Dragon, Dragon, Dragon Priest. Priest, and the, uh, what looks to be a mid-range uh, Paladin. I'm talking about the mid-range Paladin a bit. We have the MC Tech, Kel'Thuzad, Sky Golem, Reno Jackson. So this is the Reno Jackson version of the mid-range Shaman, but I mean, there's so many good Paladin cards that you can actually fit 30 of them in a deck and still have it perform really well. So, interesting to see the, uh, the, uh, how the Paladin fares, but I think this is looking really good for life codes just based on the lineup here. Yeah, exactly. He has three decks that are able to take out aggro pretty easily if given the right draw. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that on the day that he was in the group stages, Life Coach kind of struggled with his Paladin, wasn't able to deal with Secret Paladin the way that uh, Monk and I thought when we were casting that. And uh, basically, Life Coach is the only player in the final eight to advance with the score of one win and two losses. So Life Coach actually has a worse had a worse overall score than some of the players who didn't make it to the final eight. As obviously we saw some, you know, two one three way ties uh, like in the last. In the group D, for instance. So, uh, gonna be interesting to see if Life Coach can bring it together and be able to pilot all nine decks. He is someone who notoriously plays a very select few decks, that being the Paladin, the Warrior, uh, Handlock, and uh, the occasional, you know, Tempo uh, or the Mech Mage here and there. So, gonna be interesting to see if Life Coach can kind of put it together, play all these decks very successfully, and uh, take out Eloise. Obviously, Eloise, on the other hand, wanting to have these aggressive decks, you know, buck the trend and be able to take out these kind of con more controlled lineups. Absolutely here. I mean, if we look at the uh, Life Coach's performance, it, he was the 13th out of the 16 players here. Uh, not only 12th out of the 16 players, but still made top 8 because of the uh, the three-way tie there against Blue and Zoro. So, barely made the top 8, but he's looking good to uh, beat Eloise. It's, it's obviously very hard to call this early though, and, and I mean, the Paladin, for example, for Eloise will do very well, I feel, against uh, Life Coach's lineup, but it is a bit of an inconsistent deck. So there's the potential for the Paladin to just throw a lot of secrets early and, and fall apart here. But yeah, I mean, the Shaman, though, you know, it doesn't have Finley Murgleton. It just, you had to keep the same decks again. But the Shaman still, it can pull off upsets big time. And, and I feel, you know, if. if a life code, for example, doesn't draw a good start with the Paladin. I think the Paladin can definitely uh, have a bad start. I feel like the Warrior with, without the Fiery War Axe can learn, learn to a lot of trouble. So, I mean, there is definitely the potential for Eloise to just run away with this early. But I feel like this is going to be another very quick match as the aggro deck from Eloise won't take long to play. Yeah, exactly. Even if this goes the full five games, I feel like this match is going to go by quickly as far as, you know, the time is concerned. Uh, Life Coach, just looking at his lineup, the Control Warrior seems to be, seems to have a pretty decent matchup against everything that Eloise has to offer, so I don't see that having too much trouble. And uh, the Priest can run into some problems if it doesn't draw those dragons, but uh, the one deck I am looking at from Life Coach is that Reno Paladin, so that could be his weak point here and could lead to his downfall. 
downfall potentially in the round of the eight. Uh, Eloise, I think that her Secret Paladin, I mean, it's one of the strongest decks right now, but uh, going to be an open question whether or not her Hunter and Shaman can make it through. Going to be starting off with that Shaman against the Warrior, and uh, this is one of those situations where obviously Warrior is very good at, you know, bouncing back. They can go to a very, life to very low life total and just use things like Shield Block, Shield Maiden, and, uh, you know, things, even things like Bash to be able to get out of uh, the danger zone. But uh, we will see if Eloise can kind of, you know, get enough damage in before Life Coach can recover using the Whirling Zapomatic in her hand at the moment. We've been seeing the, uh, a lot of players now actually uh, adding a card that you haven't seen for some time now. And that's a Stormforced Axe. Three mana, because there's two mana and one overload here for a 2-1 weapon. It's not the worst. I mean, we have the cock hammer that's just almost straight up better than the Stormforged Axe, but it does buff the truck. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have Life Coach doing his best Rope Coach impression, going to be taking his time even on turn one right here. And uh, just thinking through every single possible scenario that could come up, he famously, you know, played Patron Warrior against Trump's Handlock in a tournament a while back. And uh, he roped turn one, roped turn two, and then won the game on turn, I think it was either five or six, just because he had planned out every single option going forth in that game. And uh, it's pretty famous because of Trump being pretty exasperated right at the beginning there. Uh, hopefully Eloise doesn't get too frazzled here. And uh, yeah, Live Coach just roping turn one, just like his, you know, his nickname suggests, just thinking through every single option here. As far as Eloise, do you think she goes for the coin Whirling Zapmatic or she goes for the uh, Lepronome? We can see right now that Live Coach doesn't have an answer for the Whirling Zapmatic, but he does for the Lepronome. So going for Lepronome on turn one could be disastrous for her here. I think Lepronome is the correct play. Uh... As generally, people run two fiery war axes, but only one taskmaster. Um, right. It's also a bit all in because you can save the coin if you go for the left pronoun, but you obviously throw away the coin if you're going for the uh, whirling mm -hmm. sapomatic. You have to play it a bit uh, Sioux style. But you also have the uh, ancestral uh, knowledge. Uh, knowledge, exactly, yeah, the ancestral knowledge here. So I feel like. Left pronoun <laughs> is the correct play, but it's going to work out worse. But I feel like, yeah, life coach is very confused and. I don't know if he roped on purpose actually, or he just, you know, <laughs> Maybe... disconnect, disconnected, or what was going on. But he looked extremely worried. Maybe you know, he like... uh, switched his client to the Chinese format or to the Chinese, and I uh, got a little bit confused about what he was playing. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it looks like he's he's looking a bit better now. Now Eloise is the one to rope here, and uh, yes, she's gonna go for the whirling zapomatic. Have. Just so much courage to put that out there, and uh, just daring life coach to have that fiery war axe. If he doesn't have the fiery war axe, it ends up working out beautifully for her. I mean, sometimes, for example, against uh, Shield the mini bot, you could just attack it with the <laughs> cool taskmaster and and take the four damage and then trade into the yeah. mini bot, you know. But this is not a scenario where you can go for something like that. Exactly. Rolling Sapmatic will just mess you up. 10 damage, we could be looking at 16 damage if that happens with the potential rock biter. But I don't think, I mean, Blackwood has to figure that this is going to be here in Power Pass. Yeah, most likely going to be the case. And uh, I mean, obviously, it's it's nice to go conservative and go for the you know the play that doesn't mess up your curve in the future, going for the Lepronome first into the Whirling Zapomatic. But uh, I just like taking a chance here because this is not a very favored matchup. Sometimes you have to just say, well, if you have the Fireworks, I lose, and if you don't, maybe I have a chance here. In any case, Eloise does have another option here. She can go for that Stormforge Axe instead of her future turns, or she can go for the super damage play, which would be the Rock Biter and the Leper Gnome. And uh, obviously, you can use Rock Biter for the future to take out something like an Acolyte of Pain, but uh, I think I want to be favoring getting in that extra six damage here. Just put Life Coach as low as possible, and she agrees. Going to go for heavy, heavy damage. Going to put 12 damage to the face of Life Coach and bring him bring him down a significant chunk, also going to play that Leper Gnome, and the pressure is on Life Coach. Yeah, no question, I mean, he can Taskmaster the Leper Gnome, but then that leaves Eloise with a great answer in the Stormforce Axe, and six more damage. We're looking at, yeah, so if that would take Life Coach down to 18, he would take six more going down to 12. Yeah, I think he if might we, just go the turn, for yeah. the Shield Slam here, now that, he, now that he's uh, picked that up here. Yeah, I mean, it would be correct. He would turn out much better for him, but I'm not sure if it's 
necessarily the the right play, but it, this is just rough for life coach. I think he will eventually go with the shield slam, but still, if he goes for the taskmaster, he may just be dead here. He's taking, yeah, he's going to 12. Mm. Uh, he also, then Eloise also has a weapon, but what can Eloise do now, though? Yeah, Eloise is probably a bit sad to see her whirling zap and go down. Is able to pick up that totem golem, which is, you know, continued pressure on the life coach, though he does have one of the better answers that you can have for it in that death bite. So, looks like life coach is stabilizing just a bit here. That is true. There's also the potential for Fire Winax plus Taskmaster, but I think, yeah, the death bite is just the obvious choice here. <laughs> I think life coach has to agree with me in the end. Uh, from there on, though, life coach is at 15 health, but Eloise has no follow up whatsoever. A toxic uh, sweater or, or, or something along the lines of that could save her here in this game. I think this is actually maybe looking better now for life coach than Eloise, even, even though uh, life coach is probably going to go down to what is it, 13 health, even. Yeah, I mean, this is just the strength of, you know, Control Warrior. Every single, so many cards in this deck just gets him back into the game with that armor. Uh, if this were something like Priest, perhaps, Eloise would have a chance to finish out the game despite the hero power. But, uh, you know, Eloise being overloaded here, even if she drew the Shredder, wouldn't be able to play that uh, only on three mana. And now has a decision to make. Every single card in her hand overloads her, and she really wants to play that Azure Drake next one. So we could see a totem pass, and that would be great news for Life Coach. Obviously, he wants to just get back in this game, stop taking all that damage, and uh, you know, just go forward to the the just looking forward to be playing that Steel Maiden on turn six. Yeah, I mean, she may have to just start going all out here. I mean, this means that she can't Ooh. play the uh, the uh, Asher yeah. Drake on top of that. So. Wow, and there's the Justicar. So if Life Coach can stabilize, it basically is game for him. Uh, there's really no way for Eloise to finish out the game if Justicar gets in motion and uh, starts allowing Life Coach to tank up. So these next few turns are going to be absolutely crucial. Maybe Eloise realizing that, you know, I can get 6 damage off this Stormforge Axe, I can draw some cards off this Ancestral Knowledge, don't necessarily need that Azure deck, especially because it might just die to the Death Spite. So Eloise going for a bit more aggressive approach here, and uh, Life Coach, as long as he can hold on, he will win this game, but it's an open question whether that, whether he can do that right now. The thing is, though, yeah, the... Uh... The deck that Eloise is playing, the variant of Agrishaman, has no bad top decks, whereas the other one has no bad stats. And that means it's going to be stronger in the late game. There's going to be the Lava Burst, there is the Doomhammer. So he, if, if, if uh, Eloise can put enough pressure, the Life Coach is forced to go for the Shield Maiden. She may even be able to power through here. Oh, what do you think wow. about Hero Power versus Taskmaster here, though? Yeah, I was thinking about the same thing, but Life Coach apparently no fear, just going to go with the Taskmaster and the Acolyte, favoring the potential draws in the future, and that's not a good draw for Eloise. Uh, it's hard to see her ever getting board control again in this game, so that Flame Tongue Totem is most likely dead. Gonna go for the Ancestral Knowledge, picks up a Blood Maze Downloads for future draws, also or potentially even spell damage if she wants to go that route. Also has a Tunnel Trog, but that's not gonna do much damage. Uh, maybe, I mean, she could even decide to go for a bit of a, a smorky Dennis play here with the uh, Tunnel Trog and Lightning Bolt the face just to make sure that, you know, Life Coach has to, or, you know, has to either take the extra two damage with his face or, you know, start taking out this cruel Taskmaster on board. But, uh, yeah, definitely difficult decision for Eloise. How does she handle this? And, uh, you know, whatever she does, I imagine Life Coach going to be playing that Shield Maiden next turn. I actually want to go ahead and say that the... Uh... Playing the Trog is actually the more passive approach. I feel like right. giving him another draw is, is going to just be worse straight up. I feel like what I would want to look at is maybe Thalnos here. Right. And turn. Because you can't go for the Lightning Bolt with the Spell Damage next turn, and the Trog oh. doesn't help you the weapon. Yeah, Eloise doesn't even want to play a Totem here, afraid of getting the 1-4, which would allow Life Coach to draw a card off of it and potentially draw even more, you know, ways to heal or ways to get some armor. Eloise just wants to deny the card draw from Life Coach, wants to prevent Life Coach from getting any sort of, you know, 
you know, bashes or, you know, shield blocks or something like that. But Life Coach all too happy. Just play this Shield Maiden and uh, wait it out. He does have the Justice Card for future turns, but uh, can't really utilize that until turn 8 because otherwise he'd be foregoing a hero power. Yeah, I mean, Doctor 3, you really have to get a board rolling here. And I kind of feel bad for Eloise. Everything seems to be going wrong. I don't know what you can do from here. At 14, with Dusty Guard coming down next turn, is there anything that, that she can do? I mean, Life Coach seems to have stabilized here. And, and when, when Warrior, you know, stabilizes one, she generally just doesn't let go. Yeah, absolutely. Right back, right back up at 14 health. Uh, Eloise doesn't have too much damage in hand. The most she could go for here is uh, obviously going for the Thanos and the Lightning Bolt to face, and that would only be six damage. And uh, from there, Life Coach can just keep on hero powering. Some Life Coach definitely wants to pick up that Doom Hammer to get the same damage, but we know she's already used one Rock Biter, so most of the stuff that Life Coach is worried about right now is kind of out of the way. Like, I mean, Eloise in particular doesn't. Oh, there's a spell damage totem to be fair, but yeah, she doesn't have. The super burst that typically the shaman uh, runs with the you know lava burst and the crackle here. Just gonna use utilize that spell damage totem right away and lo and uh, lightning bolt the face, but definitely on the back foot is Eloise as Life Coach picks up another shield maiden. So I imagine Life Coach is going to probably utilize his death bite right here because he's going to have enough minions in the future to be able to just minion combat his way out of trouble on the board. So yeah, I imagine he's gonna you know use his death bite either on the face or onto this uh, Wrath of Air totem, and then from there you know maybe if he picks up a shield block, go with that, or uh, if not, just go for this shield maiden. I doubt he's gonna you know look to play this Doctor Boom here because that would be. A little bit too risky, uh, but yeah, going for Life Coach, I mean, unless Eloise can pick up a lot of damage, Life Coach here can just go Shield Maiden into Justicar and tank up next turn. Yeah, the Shield Maiden was about as perfect as it gets. Uh, it allows him to basically go for three Shield Maidens in a row here, as you can kind of almost count a turn eight Justicar as a Shield Maiden. You heal for five, heal for five, and heal for four. I mean, and Eloise just isn't able to keep up. She doesn't have a single point of damage here in her hand, and... Yeah, this just is so rough. Everything working out here for Life Coach. He didn't get the fiery war axe initially, but everything else is just gone his way. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Life Coach with a very interesting expression there. Not, I wonder what he's thinking about at the moment. It seems pretty straightforward what happened last turn. But in any case, Eloise is able to pick up that crackle. Looks like she realizes she needs more damage than this. So going to go ahead and play the Azure Drake. Also going to play out the Tunnel Truck. Obviously not... No, needing the damage, or knowing she's not going to get the damage from the Tunnel Truck to face, but just wants to slow down Life Coach as much as possible and give Eloise as many draws as she can, or give herself as many draws as she can to be able to draw that damage and eventually kill Life Coach. But uh, again, looking pretty bad for her at the moment. I think what Life Coach may have been considering was could he have played this more aggressively instead of lethal next turn, and was that maybe the more defensive play to guarantee uh, lethal here? But is he going to hero power up? Okay, looks like he is. Yeah, he just he doesn't want to let go of this game. There's no reason for him to be in a rush then. Maybe he feels that's the case. Uh, he even has well, Lethal on the board here, so yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, with that Grommas on top of it. And Eloise does end up forfeiting here in game number one. Life coach going up here. 1 to 0 oh, and actually gets a pack on top of that. So <laughs> maybe that's that. I think it may have been the observer getting the uh, observer quest. Oh, right, done right. There. <laughs> Stay the a while observer, in this. Observing the right player there, getting the, getting the pack. <laughs> Um, in the case, Life Coach does go up 1-0, to zero, but that was the deck that we were expecting to have the easiest time to pick up a win here. And, uh, I mean, we could see Eloise come back. However, we've been saying that all day, right? No one has come back today. It's been all 3 zeros. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see if Eloise can, in fact, avoid the 3 zero sweep that uh, has befallen Firebat, Bra Rose, and Dog thus far. But, uh, yeah, Life Coach, I mean, again, the biggest weakness in this deck is the Paladin. And we're going to have to see how that works out in these matchups here. You know, question about that, it'll just depend on what Life Coach is going to go for next. Is he going to be bringing out that Priest? Is he going to be going for the Reno Paladin? I personally am really excited to see the Reno Paladin. But we have to keep in mind, though, that uh, Life Coach's 9-deck lineup didn't work out too well in the uh, 
initial group stage. He did end up losing two of his matches, so there may be some weak points generally here for him. Maybe not now, but possibly later. If we look at just the uh, scenario last time, though, the only match that he did win uh, in the initial group stage was with Warrior Priest Paladin. Right, so right, right. Th this may be what he was looking at doing, just going for the exact same idea there. But that meant that he loses uh, in the second match. We'll have to see. Life coach here with a rough hand. I mean, I think the cog hammer is decent, but he definitely wants the zombie Chow. This is the problem, though. He had such a top-heavy curve with that Paladin Sky Golem, for example, Dr. Boom, Kals the Tsar, for example, and Paladin. So he keeps the cog hammer. That's generally not something you want to have happen. Cairn and, and Tyrion is not going to cut it. I mean, yeah. Oof. Yeah, absolutely. Life coach loving his control paladin and obviously reno giving him kind of an excuse to be able to play it uh like he said loves the pile of sky golem just puts that in so many of his decks and also likes to play kelthuzad as well so we are seeing that in his deck uh, for this match but uh, could you know could be trouble for him in that situation one thing to consider is that when he played this lineup he played against blue and there were a few misplays by blue to allow life coach to take that victory there so yeah it could be a bit of trouble for him uh, going against a bit more experienced player in Eloise. That is true here, and, and the Tilly mini bot is, is exactly what he needed. But Eloise does have two totem golems and a much stronger hand than last game, even though her hand was pretty decent. Uh, the weapon, also the Stormforged Axe, may end up being critical here. I wonder what Eloise is going for the turn after. I mean, he can. Life Coach can fully clear though with the car camera. This right. is the swing that he needed. He yeah. is way, way ahead after being. So things looking really rough yeah. in the initial start. He just got wow. exactly what he needed in the, in the, in the powder sweater as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that cog hammer isn't very effective. You don't have anything to use it on, as we see a big smile on Live Coach's face. But yeah, without that shield of minibot, if he had drawn a blank, he would have been hero powering. And from there, obviously, the hero power plus cog hammer cannot take out the uh, the totem golem there. And then would be a bit behind in tempo. As it stands, Eloise gets to play out this feral spirit, but she's only going to be having two mana the following turn. So going to be you know pretty weak turn for her next turn, Pro possibly that totem golem. But uh, Life Coach definitely taking the initiative right now. Yeah, is the equality actually worth it? It will keep him with a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2 two, two plus the weapon Ooh, still. Right. I feel like I kind of like just going for the Pile of Shatter here. Yeah, I, I mean, the the obvious play is that Pile of Shatter, but you know, the quality does get a quite a bit of work done, and particularly because Eloise only has two mana next turn. Imagine if Life Coach... Obviously, we see that she has the Totem Goal in hand, but from Life Coach's perspective, what if he does this, and then Eloise just Totems next turn? He would been, be in a commanding position, not to mention that he doesn't have... Uh, he doesn't have a five drop, so I mean, piloted, or excuse me, the piloted shredder would be pretty good on the following turn in lieu of that. The other thing to consider as well is that, I mean, equality doesn't work very well against uh, against the minions that Eloise has. Typically, it hurts his own minions more than it does his opponents. So I think that was part of the calculus in going for that play because he wanted to make use of it before it becomes a dead card. Yeah, the, the brilliance is, is absolutely here for life codes. Uh If he top decks something, like a 3-drop, 4-drop, 5-drop, it would be strictly better to go for the Paladin Sweater. But if he top decks something bad, like the uh, Paladin uh, Sky Golem here, it's much better to have gone for the Cold the last turn. So life codes definitely getting the better end of the stick. I mean, it wouldn't have been bad to get a 5-drop here to be able to play instead of the Sweater, but... Considering how he was drawing, maybe he's figuring his curve is so inconsistent that he just wants to go for uh, some value instead of potentially hero pounding. But okay, what we're going to be looking at from Eloise here, Tuska Totemic seems iffy as the totem will just just die. I mean, yeah. then we have the 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 uh, totem golem, which will probably also fall. 
Lepernome doesn't seem good. I mean, Lepernome, Tushka Totemic would just fall, I think, here. Yeah, I mean, maybe the best option. Everything looks so bad here. Do you just hope that you get the 1 in 8 Totem Golem off the Tuscar Totemic? That could be the best play, but looks like she's not going to take that chance. Going to go for the Whirling Diplomatic and Tuscar Totemic. The one benefit of this is that it forces Life Coach to at least take the 3 damage from the Whirling Diplomatic because he needs to get rid of that. Also. He has the Tusk Guard himself and is not able to heal on top of it. He wins the Joust, I mean... He almost certainly is, wins the Joust too, right? I mean, the, how much... You're really competing against, like, one Azure Drake and that's it. The so. thing is, though, all of his, or, or most of his uh, high-cost minions are in his hand right now, so... He may potentially get unlucky, I mean... Six, I mean, six, six drop, six drop, eight drop, six drop, five drop, so... <laughs> Not a I'm, guaranteed as it would be if there was just a, a an average handed life which is handy. All right, let's put it on the line. I'm calling the Kelthuzad when he plays the turtle. I'm calling the zombie tail. <laughs> That would be absolutely devastating. For Eloise, she does get the Vitality Totem, which is no real help to her. I mean, if Life Coach is beating her down, then she's pretty much lost the game already. So not what she wanted to see whatsoever. And I'm going to leave this Tuscar Totemic pretty vulnerable. Let's see what she follows up with. Could be that Lepernome. And uh, yeah, at the moment, the I mean, Life Coach has only one minion to work with here to you know do that minion to minion comeback. So we could see that Lepernome getting some damage in. And uh, yeah, with the pick up the Big Game Hunter, most likely that's going to be the case. I want to go ahead and say that the uh, Vitality Submit was the worst totem. Oh, any... loses it to the Azure Drake. That is the biggest card in Eloise's deck. There is a bit of luck for her. I mean, obviously this game has not worked out at all, but at least that one uh, Joust went right for her. And she picks and up the Doom Hammer. This is just blown wide open here. Wow. In of peace. That's so... what is it? Uh, that's that's uh, 10 damage here, and this is a Crackle plus a... Lightning Bolt. I mean, you need to top deck something like an Earth Shock, but Ooh. this is looking doable now. Wow! Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, between the the win on the Joust for uh, on the side of Eloise and now this Doom Hammer, looking to be in a pretty good spot. Obviously, this Tyrion is something to contend with, but you know, it's still pos still a possibility here if she can maybe pick up something to deal with this. Yeah, we need to be the Earth Shock, but. I mean, also, does the life coach kill the vitality totem or go face with the sky golem? I'm actually interested to see what his idea on it will be. Yeah. I think he may need to clear both totems here. He's gonna take damage on per. No, he's gonna go face. Okay, so he's just gonna leave that uh, that flame tongue totem there, realizing there's not too many chargers. As she picks up the rock biter weapon. That's uh, it's pretty awkward against the Tyrion, but it could come in handy in the near future. Actually, he could have lethal here, right here. Right, yeah, lightning if she bolts, gets a, bolts gets a six angle. Yeah. He lightning bolts a Tyrion, and if he gets, yeah, exactly, a six or, or spell damage totem. Gets spell and damage. he gets a spell damage totem, oh my god. She has god. a 50-50 lethal right now if she wants to go for it. She has to go for it, there's no other option. She has to figure there might be lay on hands or heal bot or, or you know, Jackson even. I mean, can she be expecting new injection? Maybe if she actually looked up what Life Coach was playing, but... Yeah, you kind of have to go for this right now. Does she go for it, though? This is so risky, but you have to take a risk in this situation. Look at this board. You're so far behind. This is your one potential opportunity. <sighs> She's going to crackle the face, actually, which I guess... Oh, she gets the very lowest draw possible. Going to go with the... Lightning bolt as well was I think was there lethal here with with the way she did it? No, there wasn't. But <sighs> yeah, I mean, she uh, yeah, I, th I think she's definitely should have gone for the for the potential lethal, even though because he doesn't have a follow up, and and if the taunt is gone, I mean, she I needs know. to find some sort of direct damage in the next turn. I don't think she can get by with just this rock biter alone. Mm-hmm. And Life Coach has a way to deal with this board and prevent the Tyrion from, or prevent the Divine Shield from coming off of Tyrion here as well. Uh, this is a very difficult tur turn for Life Coach as well. Obviously, no healing and just needs to stay alive, but also needs to kill Eloise as fast as possible. Doesn't want to give her too many turns to be able to draw into it. Yeah, I mean, maybe looking at something like uh, potentially. 
I don't even know. He's looking for the uh, the medic, the one eight, potentially. I mean, I don't even know here. Go for Sylvanas, okay, okay. So Earth Shock, Lava Burst, Lightning Bolt, Crackle. Ancestral spirit potentially, or knowledge potentially. Rock Rock Rockbiter is it. not it. She can smack that Tyrion and kill it, but that's going to be it. Life goes. Wait, 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 it's it's lethal. Is it's it? lethal. Yeah, he, she attacks once with the doom hammer, two rock biters on the flame tongue, and then hits face. <laughs> oh, wait. does she see it though? Oh my god. Wait. That's lethal. Yeah, it's it's complicated, but it's lethal. Wait, explain that again. I'm having a okay. Once to the face of the doom hammer. Once to the terrier of the doom hammer. Two rock biters on the flame tongue, and then oh right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. She's she's got it. She's got it. You are right. So there it is. <laughs> she, yeah, two rock biters on the flame tongue totem. Gonna kill the terrier, and now she can hit the face. Wow, very well spotted by her, and she's going to take this game. That is ridiculous. She won the joust. I think that was the highlight of this game. I mean, oof. That was absolutely insane. I can't believe she took that game. So many things had to go right for her, and uh, so many things had to go wrong for Life Coach, but that's kind of the nature of how the decks work. You know, the Shaman's just so consistent and able to draw that damage, whereas the Paladin, like we mentioned before, just so inconsistent and can't always draw the healing that it needs. Not at all, yeah. I mean... Will the Reno Paladin be what has to happen here? It's, but it's possible, but oof, the Shaman is out of the way though for Eloise. So she has Secret Paladin, which we were talking about being the easy win here, and then the Face Hunter. I mean, Face Hunter could absolutely take a win against this Paladin if Life Coach doesn't draw well. There's so many six, seven, eight drops in Life Coach's deck. So on a bad hand, everything just fall apart. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, uh, the previous turn when she had the Crackle and the Lightning Bolt, because Life Coach was at 10, the rolling a 6 on the uh, the Crackle would have just been lethal on the face there as well. So didn't have to go through Tyrion in that instance, so just decided to go the face, didn't want to take that risk. Uh, so that would, that would have been lethal as well, so she did not make any mistakes there as far as uh, taking a chance to go for lethal. Just rolled low on the Crackle, which was definitely unfortunate for her, but, but fortunate for her to get the Rockbiter in the end to be able to take that win down. Now she has two decks left, obviously being the Secret Paladin and the Face Hunter. A little bit of hybrid in there with those two Paladin Shredders, but uh, yeah, mostly going to be very, very aggressive. And obviously Life Coach with the, I believe it was Dragon Priest, and uh, the obviously the Reno Paladin left. It was indeed here, yeah. I mean, Dragon Priest is strong against the Secret Paladin, but I feel like Secret Paladin probably has the upper hand on the Reno Paladin. Yeah, absolutely. Just Seeker Paladin so, uh, so consistent in being able to get his draws out there. And, you know, in particular, the Reno Paladin filled with so many minions. You know, you can't put too many answers in the deck, obviously, because you only put one of each of those inside the deck. So, I mean, you're probably going to see a similar situation as we just saw with a bunch of, you know, heavy creatures in hand that can't really deal with the huge amount of tempo gained by, you know, just having all those crazy secrets on the board and everything just building up and you know the, the event so hard to deal with uh, on the right minions. So we will see if that's the the uh, matchup we see. Nope, it's going to be the Dragon Priest from Life Coach. Not a deck that he plays too much. Obviously, uh, he pretty much copied this deck directly from his teammate Tice. Uh, going to be the version with Bran Bronzebeard in it instead of the Zombie Chow, I believe. But uh, looks like we're going to have to wait to see Eloise's... Oh, it looks like she's playing Paladin. So, yeah, going to be the Secret Paladin versus the Dragon Priest. And yeah, It seems like the uh, the top uh, observer is lagging out here, sadly. But we talk a bit about this matchup. It is favored for the Priest. Now, the key cards are definitely the Worm Quest, definitely the Zombie Chow, and the Light Bomb. Because the idea is, as soon as the Doctor Six hits the board, you just attack in and light bomb. The Shadow of Death is also critical, but I don't think you keep it. You only keep Valance if you have a one drop in hand. And Life Coach obviously is on top of that and throws the, the Valance away. But I actually have to say that I prefer the uh, the Dark Holtist version over the Brown version. I've been playing a ton of Dragon Priest myself, and 
it's just not as consistent. You want to be playing your three drops on turn three, and if you're playing brown on turn three, it's just going to be say a weaker than uh, the dark cultist. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty big draw here from Life Coach, however, getting that Zolvi Chow. Obviously, no dragons in hand, so unable to activate. Uh, quote unquote, that Wormus agent on the following turn. Eloise with a secret on turn one. We cannot see her hand, obviously, so don't know what that secret is quite yet. Does play Shield Mini Ball on turn two, which is one of the best two drops in the game. We'll see how Life Coach deals with this. Obviously, doesn't have a dragon yet, even after, or obviously after drawing that uh, Holy Nova. So, do you go for the unbuffed Wormus agent? Uh, do you attack in and heal your zombie chow? Or do you uh, forego, or do you give up the coin here to go for the uh, Dark Cultist? I personally like the cultist, but I wouldn't mind the heal. Uh, I think yeah, I was looking at if this was noble sacrifice, he'd heal. If not, he'd go for the dark cultist. I think looking at the worm quest, okay. Uh, I mean, it's it's good versus. I can only think about, about being good against the master, but I don't right. know. All right, we see that the Avenge is playable in Eloise's hand, so the secret up right now isn't Avenge. Uh, did you see if the minibot came from the middle of her hand or the right side? If it came from the middle, it likely is going to be uh, Redemption because that would be. Yeah, a I think it, it is Redemption now or Sacred Trials, and I think Sacred Trials is very, very unlikely. We've seen him attack, so it's not Eye for Nile. We've seen him drop a minion, it's not Repentance. We've seen the, the minibot should have a turn, so it's not going to be uh, a. Competitive spirit, yeah, so it has to be redemption here. Right, right, right. Okay, so it's going to be that redemption, and that means Life Coach has to get through it now that there's a taunt on it. And uh, Eloise curving out pretty nicely there, but uh, there is the Light Bomb, so if Life Coach ever gets too far behind, he can use that as a last resort. Going to play out this Dark Cultist, obviously knows that it's not going to be uh, the Repentance. Although that wouldn't be the worst mean to get repented because, uh, you know, obviously buffs up the other means on the board. But uh, from Eloise... Consecrate here is going to be really strong. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hmm. you kill both the minions, you avoid the death rattle. And, but still, Eloise isn't putting any damage on Life Coach and she's taking some damage herself. She wants to be putting down the sweater and going face next to him, but you have to play defensive, it looks to be. Yeah, I mean, could you even go for the Shredder here? Uh, if you go for the Shredder, do you kill the Dark Cultist or do you kill uh, the Wormless Agent? It's, you know, an open question, obviously. Both, I mean, if you kill the Dark Cultist, that 1-7 would be pretty annoying going forward. Uh, killing the Wormless Agent, though, you leave so much power on the board from that Dark, that dark Cultist. So, uh, yeah, pretty difficult. Obviously, Life Coach thinking about it as well. Doesn't want to leave this, uh, potentially leave this, um, uh, this shield on. This does allow Eloise to get a bit of damage, even if she does go for the Consecrate. So, uh, again, pretty difficult turn for her. And uh, looks like she is going to go for the Consecrate. I think to keep in mind is there's no Dragon still. So, but and Also, Life Coach can't even steal the uh, Cabal. So if he goes for nothing here, he may be in trouble. But he top decks the Dragon. Wow. Well, he, I mean, even if he gets rid of this, it is going to come back as a 2-1 with Divine Shield. So, it's not the, I mean, it's pretty big deal, but not game ending here whatsoever. Obviously, having that board control so early for the Dragon Priest would be nice, but not going to gain it quite yet. And Eloise does pick up the Blessing of Kings. Do you go for that here, knowing that it could get Shadow Word Death? I don't think so, actually. I think you go for the Sweater event here, and... The reason behind that is you can clear no matter what. Uh, but my, my thinking here is it's, it's so crucial that Life Coach didn't just waste four mana last turn. Uh, you can go for the Azurvik, it won't be the best, but he's still, he's still in this and he has the Light Bomb as, as assurance if there is going to be uh, a mission challenge. But Bran coming down here, yeah, I think this may open some possibilities with the Sync Master. Yeah, absolutely, especially in the future. I mean, he could use it for utility just to make sure he takes glass damage, or he can use it on that turn 8, obviously, to take most of the things in Eloise's deck other than the biggest of minions. Eloise has a decision here whether or not to go for the Blessing of Kings now. Obviously, that event, pretty poor draw for her, unable to play it anytime soon. Also, this uh, this Haunted Creeper is a bit of a liability as well because of the potential for Cabal Shadow Priest. That is true. Uh, but the thing is, though, Eloise is running out of steam, and 
Life codes can go for the light bomb next turn. Doesn't look the most appealing, but he knows at least now there's probably going to be no message challenges. So I would be very, very impressed if he does end up going for the light bomb here. It's not necessarily the right play though, in theory, because he will will get the uh, two drop out of the Paladin Sphere, and it will also probably get avenged, potentially even uh, triggered by redemption. But we know that there's only one in an uh, Elvis deck. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we do see that Eloise played the Paladin Shredder first, and then played the Avenge. So the Paladin Shredder would die before the Avenge goes off, so the Avenge would be able to be uh, activated. Uh, so good sequencing there by Eloise, realizing that that could be something, uh, could be uh, a factor in the future. So Life Coach thinking right now uh, whether or not to go for that Light Bomb. And uh, like you said, would be pretty impressive, especially because you're only facing an event two drop. Looks like he's just gonna go for the Holy Nova, but that will make that pile cheddar pretty big. Sure will here, but is it gonna be enough to close out a whole game though? I don't know. On the bright side, it does allow her to play that event so she can get those cards out of her hand and maybe get some value out of that in the future. I wonder if Life Coach reads into this though, because I think, I mean, Eloise did use all of her mana last turn, but it did involve using a hero power, so maybe Life Coach could kind of read that, you know, one of the cards was stuck in her hand, but now she's able to play it. Valence shows are not going to be very helpful. I mean, Life Bomb now seems so much less appealing than it did last turn. Cabal seems okay, but I, mean, I think this will just come down to does Eloise top deck a big mini? And I think if she does, she's looking like she might take this one, but if, if not, I like uh, Life Coach's position. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be interesting to see how greedy he gets. Obviously, he could go for the Light Bomb and set up, shut down some of the damage here. Uh, it would take off. Let's see, it would take off 4 damage from the board, because that Shredder would die, but it would uh, bring back uh, one of the minions via, or would make one of the minions bigger via Avenge. And obviously the Shredder would come back, so actually it will only take off about 2 damage depending on what comes off the Shredder. So I guess it makes sense not go not to go for the Light Bomb in this situation. And uh, does end up just stealing this Haunted Creeper to uh, get back some board position, but likely going to be taking a lot of damage to the face here. Yeah, we have to just see where uh, Life Coach is after the Light Bomb that it's absolutely going to be coming down the following turn. The thing is now, she can proc the secrets pretty easily and then go for the Light Bomb after trading into the Sweater on top of that. So it looks like he might get a full clear. Do you throw your... I think you attack with the uh, Cabal Shadow Priest first, correct? I think you wouldn't. I think you would want to... Just clear everything. Because you don't want your spiders dying. Well, the one ones aren't the aren't really that important. Uh -huh. It's about it's about the health and the potential for a blessing of kings on a minion. Because if there's a minion that can attack next to them, might be crucial. So I feel like okay, you are sacrificing two spiders, but you you're giving, uh, but you're, you're killing the. Uh, you're killing the two drops that comes out of the center instead. Right, and then it'll guaranteed be able to. Uh, you'll be able to deal uh, with whatever spawn comes out. Well, I guess if it's a 2-3, you wouldn't, but that's not really a big deal. Not too uh, worrisome. So it is a 2-3, so it will survive this Light Bomb. I imagine you had to Light Bomb here. So, yeah, you, there's no question, yeah. So Light Bomb, probably followed by the Shrink Meister, just to get something onto the board and uh, be able to trade there. Can't even use the Valence Chosen for, the, for future possibilities but yeah there's basically no burst damage in the hand of Eloise and that's repentance most like that's one of the worst cards that she could possibly draw here maybe even the worst I think the worst yeah but still I mean life coach doesn't have a taunt <laughs> as I say that yeah I just wow. get full I mean does he play brand first though it only increases wow. the attack but it's impressive that he is playing around repentance I'm really impressed by life coach here yeah, he's seen so many secrets though, so it's pretty likely at this point. And uh, will we see a Valens on that or not? I think no question, yeah, at this point. You can kill the 1-1 one, one and guarantee that he'll, he'll stay alive. I mean, also what you have to consider is that he... Hmm. I mean, so the only the only reasonable scenario that I see Eloise coming back now is with the Divine Favor, so it would be stronger to uh, have the balance out of your hand. Right, so... Life Coach 
kind of playing a bit, uh, you know, risky here because that can get taken out by Blessing of Kings or True Silver, but realizing that he can just heal out of range afterwards, uh, if that were the case, it would take, you know, two cards in a row to be able to deal with that. So Life Coach realizing that he wants to give as many uh, minions onto the board as possible, busts up his Shrinkmeister instead of his Wormus Agent, and now is looking to be in a really good position. Although, strangely enough, that Haunted Creeper is a kind of an okay draw for Eloise, considering that it's annoying for Life Coach to get rid of all of these minions. It's true, yeah, but I mean, if we look at Life Coach taking this game, this was the auto win for him. He still has to win with the Reno Lock, and, and I think this is not the biggest deal here. I mean, it will give him uh, another chance. Uh, we'll give it, we'll take away Eloise's chance to win with the Hunter. So I feel like at this point, it's about can Life Coach win with his Paladin, and can Ooh. Eloise win with her Hunter? <laughs> How but many chances? Chance it comes down, yeah. But the, still, there's the there was death to finish that off. It's it's gonna draw what one secret, two secrets. Yeah, she's just gonna give it up. She's dead on board essentially, even if she draws the. Um, Noble Sacrifice there, so just going to give it up, doesn't even need to play it. And that's going to be a 2 to 1 lead for Life Coach, able to get that Priest out of the way, but still hasn't dodged the question of can his Paladin get the win here? And uh, going to be pretty difficult, honestly, uh, to have you know consistent enough draw. Going to need that Reno, particularly against the Hunter. Yeah, no question. I think it's, it's oh, against Hunter, though, you feel often like you need the. Uh... Uh, heal bot, and that's going to be the key. But you even throw away heal bot against face hunter. That's how how aggressive you need to be. Because if you're if the hunter has three minions on board by turn three and is attacking your face, even if you drop a heal bot into a three minion board, you'll still just die. If you're taking eight damage per turn just from the minions. Healing over eight doesn't do anything. So I feel like it's going to be about the zombie chair, about the heal minion bot, and about the call camera consecrated for life pulse. Does he even run heal bots? We saw that he ran the turtle uh, for five mana that heals for seven rather than eight. But um, yeah, it could be the case that he doesn't even run it. Uh, obviously, with a 30 card deck, it's hard to keep track of every single last thing there when they show the graphic on screen. But does get the zombie chow right away against his secret paladin. Obviously, not going to be quite as good against secret paladin as it would be against hunter, but still pretty big for him here. Yeah, I mean, this hand, though, is just godlike for life quotes. He keeps on getting these insane hands. He's been having the car camera now twice. And, well, I guess one of them was Eloise, but the car camera has played such a big role here in these Paladin games. In the mirror, though, this is looking good for life quotes, I have to say. Yeah, definitely. Getting that Zombie Chow, even getting the Consecrate, I think he kept that in his opening hand because obviously there's only going to be one Consecrate in the entire deck. And uh, I mean, we were talking about how inconsistent this deck can be, and obviously lacking some of the answers that other Paladin decks have, typically. And, uh, you know, the danger, obviously, is going to, have, going to be having those, you know, very clunky, costy minions in hand like you see the Cairn there, but you know, thus far, Life Coach dodging that has a really good hand considering what his deck is. I mean, yeah, Life Coach's problem is it's never going to be the late game, it's going to be the early game, and with the Zombie Chow Contract Ooh. I feel like it's almost guaranteed to be good here. Even the Acolyte of Pain, even if he doesn't have a use for this um, Elder Peacekeeper next turn. I mean, preferably you want to keep the uh... Alder Peacekeeper for a Mr. Challenger, so the Acolyte of Pain is a great addition here. Yeah, absolutely. And we will see if Life Coach does pick picks up the equality as well. So now unlikely to even see a Consecrate on 4, even if Eloise plays it, because he has the ultimate reset button in that equality Consecrate. So we I think we're going to have to see here a, a rope turn. No question on which <laughs> 3 dot he ends up going for. Which one would you go for in this position? It's pretty close. Um, what you could do is play the Aldor and get a quote-unquote free trade on this Night Dragon, but obviously that's very difficult with the potential muster for battle coming up. Um, if you play the Acolyte, it's very difficult for Eloise to play the uh, Knife Juggler there, so I think what he ends up doing after considering all the possibilities is he kills the Knife Juggler with the Zombie Child, then plays the Acolyte, realize, once he realizes that it comes back, because then the Knife Juggler has to trade into the Acolyte, lest Eloise uh, 
lest Eloise give him so many cards, but looks like it's not going to be the case. Going to go with the what I originally thought could happen, and it can actually just kill us off right now. Uh, yeah, either play pretty strong, good. Yeah. yeah, either play pretty good. I guess this play is a bit better than mine as far as tempo is concerned, which is, I mean, tempo in this matchup is everything. So uh, after reconsidering, I think I like life coaches better. Life coaches play better than mine. I think yeah, the reason behind that is life coaches figuring okay, Aldor can be great against Mr. Challenger, but if I have an equality, I don't need to be keeping the uh, Aldor. It's fantastic in this position here. He has the Consecrate for the for the master. I wonder if he's going to use it now. I think yeah, that may be okay. so risky because, you know, that's the one Consecrate in your entire deck. You might not be able to ever deal with a bo your opponent's board after this. Guess he mind control tech, so maybe he doesn't even need to Consecrate at this moment. So what does Life Coach do here? He could clear one of these 1-1s one -ones with his Zombie Chow, anticipating an event, and then clear the 4-3 with his Aldor, and then play the Acolyte. Or he could maybe just go face and brave the competitive spirit and hope, hopefully, uh, for his sake, that Eloise plays another minion and he can maybe steal it with mind control tech. Looks like he's going for the latter here. Yeah, that seems to be it. I mean, I could have been going a bit aggressive, not fearing the quartermaster as he's seen the coin already. Now, could Eloise possibly go for a second master? And wow, how horrible that would be. I mean, every option here just seems like it will fall. Uh, he has to trade. She has to trade <clears throat> at least into the Aldo. I think what I like here is just it's so hard though because the the uh, the Aquila will get so much value no matter what happens. Yeah, definitely. Even if you get an Avenge off of it, still giving your opponent potentially three cards is really painful. Looks like she's gonna go for the Honor Creeper and Hero Power. Uh, me, I imagine she's gonna hit all face. She needs to start getting that damage in. And uh, this leaves an excellent turn for Life Coach. He can run his Acolyte in and then steal one of his opponent's minions. And guess the the uh, Keeper of Oldemon as well. Could that be put to use here? I feel like a bit later on. Uh, not right now. Uh, but how is this Ecosy going to be here? Um, is he just going to pop into a 1-1 and think yeah. that this might be a second redemption? I mean, he probably yeah. figures that this is going to be an Avenge or a Noble Sacrifice. I mean, we, we know now that it's going to be an event, and in that case, it's better to attack with the Aldor first into the Haunted Creeper. But yeah, he's he, playing he knows it's either Redemption or, or Avenge here, so yeah, I think this is exactly the right order. Gets the Avenge off and then plays the Mind Control Tech. What is he going to get? Go yeah, definitely going to go for that. Gets a 1-1, one, one, which is the lower half, obviously, of the options, so nothing too crazy right now. Has the Owl, but I doubt he's going to use it in this situation. Probably I think I would win. here, but he uh, that's just okay. my, my opinion. Yeah, the, the board state is so fragile right now. If he can get ahead and then equality, whatever comes out after, doesn't look like he's. He looks upset, honestly, about his choice. He's shaking his head here. Yeah, I think it's just a really hard decision. Uh, I think he just wants to save the owl for something even bigger. Has so many answers though, which is not what you normally see uh, with this Reno Paladin deck. Obviously, you know it's one of every single card. So being able to find the Keeper of Aldemon, being able to find the Mind Control tech, as well as the owl and the Call to Consecrate is great for Life Coach, especially because from now on he's going to be drawing minions. That is true. Lothab seems like the obvious choice, but it will give the uh, Akla the option of the third draw here in a row, and there's no mysterious challenger. Things are looking bleak here for Eloise. I think the older man is, is so. This is everything here for, for uh, Life Coach, as it allows him to deal with the potentially the Lothab, or he could just go for his uh, Cairn. I mean, he's in no hurry here. Yeah, absolutely. One thing about the Secret Paladin is that it doesn't have burst damage at all, really. I mean, sometimes you can play a Blessing of Kings or something like that, but typically the way that the Secret Paladin wins the game is just through temping, tempoing your opponent out of the game, and you eventually just get a bunch of damage naturally just by, you know, just being so far ahead of your opponent on board. And uh, sometimes you get, you know, 10 damage off from a Mysterious Chandra or stuff like that. But, you know, no burst damage out of nowhere, so if Life Coach can just stay relatively even on the board, and he doesn't even need to worry about that. That is true here. I think I kind of like the Cairn here even. It <clears throat> doesn't have the best fate against Lothep, but it's still so much presence on the board. Uh, yeah, and even if 
you know, if Lothib trades into Cairn, that's five damage you're not taking to the face, and potentially you can, you know, clear it off with a Consecrate or maybe one other, one other minion. Looks like he's going to favor the Oldemon, realizing that he has a reset button in his hand, you know, with that... Um, that call to consecrate in the future so I mean he has future options so just gonna play it pretty safe here not gonna give his opponent the ability to take advantage of his board and now he has definitely the board lead and Eloise just so few options right here wants to be turn 7 so bad for her uh, or she wants it to be turn 7 so bad because of that Dr. Boom but no such luck can't top deck the Mysterious Challenger only gets the Seeker Keeper now is she a bit of Harrison? And I'm kind of interested to see how she sequences the attack with the weapon. I think that's going to be the main point of this turn. How is she going to use the weapon? I mean, she has to be killing the Acolyte because it's going to get a trade no matter what. Uh, but just, does she do it with the, the minion? Does she do it with the weapon? Does she master first or master second? It's hard to tell. Yeah. I think it may be better to master second. Yeah, it could be the case, though. You do get rid of that, you know, pretty potent weapon in the cog. I mean, two damage versus one damage makes a pretty big difference. Obviously, you don't need the extra charge from the, that uh, uh, muster for battle or the light assist, but uh, looks like she's going to go for the muster. Is she going to go for the cog hammer as well? I guess the divine shield and taunt doesn't really matter too much in this context. Uh, pretty easily dealt with by life coach with his minions on board. So just going to go for the biggest board possible. Three one ones, a secret keeper, and finally another hero power. There is the turtle providing yeah, yeah. healing, but he doesn't really need it right now. I mean, imagine just play the Dr. Boom out in this situation. I mean, yeah, at this point, uh, the hero path has to matter for Eloise, as sad as that is. But, I mean, is there an option just to go for the Consecrate here? I mean, does he really need to be saving that? Like, if, if there's a big minion <clears throat> out, he can just equality and then be fine? Yeah, we haven't had the opportunity to to track every single card, but uh, if Life Coach knows that Eloise doesn't have Quartermaster in her deck, then I don't think there's any reason to uh, to uh, use Consecrate here. And it looks like he's not going to. Gonna go for the Doctor Boom, just get as much damage or much power, excuse me, on the field as possible. And uh, always feels great to have the first Doctor Boom on the field. That is true here. I mean, Life Coach going for the aggressive option, and I think it's. Not not a bad one here. Uh, I mean, if Eloise is going for her own Doctor Boom, then Life Coach can potentially just go for the quality and then silence his own Doctor Boom, <laughs> taking it back to seven health. Right. I think that would be very impressive to see because he can also go for the Consecrate on top of that. We'll see. Have to see how the Boom bots go, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Could definitely go for that play, but once you go for that play and silence your own Doctor Boom, uh, at that point you're immediately going to do oh, picks up the big game on tree. Doesn't even need to at this point. Wow. <laughs> wow. But I was gonna say, if you go for that play, then your Doctor Boom seven health and all is hundred percent dying to Boom bots, but doesn't even need it in this situation. I mean, he could just go all face here, go you know, consecrate and big game hunter, even save the equality. He has so many options right now. It's all of the, uh, everything you have need. He has the value in Cairn, he has the removal in both the silence and the uh, equality, he has the Consecrate on top of that. He could even save I the Consecrate. Again, this is the only Consecrate in his deck, so maybe he just plays the Sludge Belter here. I think you have to go with the Consecrate okay. now. I mean, yeah, all like, right. she's at 8 health, he'll go down to 7 health, it'll be hard for him just to survive, let alone put any... Uh, yeah. Just the threat to uh, add exactly. to the coach. Yeah, sorry to cut you off there. He's basic. I think what he was doing is just making sure that his Doctor Boom stayed alive. They're even willing to sacrifice the big game hunter, but that's going to be it. All you Eloise fans, sorry about that. Life coach going to take the series three games to one, and he moves on to the semifinals to face Calento. That was an amazing series. Very well played by both players, and uh, I would say just very well played by Life Coach, and you know. I, I want to say pretty pretty fortunate for him to be able to survive this round with that Reno Paladin. What do, what do you think? I think so, yeah. I mean, Life Coach now has his, I guess, quote-unquote best decks out of the way, though. This was the only lineup that he won with uh, in the right. round of 16 here, and he will face Colenton up next, someone who he has faced so many times before in the past. Uh, but yeah, now the uh, round of four is set. We're going to have Tom against Jaysha, 
China versus Taiwan, Tom the Chinese killer here, uh, and then <laughs> life coach against Colento. What a fantastic uh, round of four here. Yeah, definitely. So much variety as well. Have the seasoned pros in Colento, life coach, and Tom. And we have the Chinese qualifier, Jay Shaw, with the upset of this tournament, being able to defeat Firebat, obviously getting out of his group earlier with Surrender. You guys do not want to miss that. We will have Jay Shaw versus Tom right after this break, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> 